Creating your first website can be very intimidating, which is why this video is a full in-depth tutorial to show you all of the tools needed to create your first website using Wix. So I'm gonna make a bold claim here and say that if you watch this entire video, if you watch from beginning to end and understand everything I say and everything I show you in this video, then you will have all of the tools required to make a successful website. So when I say successful, that could mean a bunch of different things depending on what you're trying to do with your website. If this is a business, successful could be gaining more leads or making more sales online. It could be reaching out to more customers and marketing to them so they see who you are. Maybe they call you up and wanna do business with you. If you are doing a fundraiser and you want a website for your fundraiser, this is a great way to look professional out there and show the world you know, more about your fundraiser, have them more likely to either volunteer or participate or donate money or whatever you're trying to do. On the flip side, maybe you are doing something more personal. Maybe you're making a website for your resume or for a portfolio of different art pieces that you've made, or even more personal than that, maybe you're making a website for your wedding or something. And so whatever you're doing this video, I wanna show you all the tools you need to make a professional website to impress other potential clients, impress people that might wanna hire you, impress your friends that came to your weddings. So without further ado, let's get into this video and start creating your website. Now, one last thing I want to mention though is if you get lost at any point I recommend pausing rewinding and re-watching and if that's still a little bit too fast I know sometimes I speak a little quickly I recommend going down in the settings so there's a little settings a gear icon somewhere on the YouTube player and play it back a little bit slower that might be helpful for you if that doesn't answer your question comment down below and I'll do my best to help everyone Okay, so I'm starting off this Wix tutorial on this landing page right here. This is where you would end up if you click the link in the description below. So what I wanna do is just obviously click start now and it'll bring you through and say, yes, we're going to create a site, creating our first site under our new account. And then it asks you what type of site you wanna create. This is self-explanatory, but as you can imagine, there are endless options for why you'd wanna create a site. So maybe this could help you decide exactly what your site is for. It's very important to have a direct purpose for your site. Or maybe it's going to be a good idea to help you, you know, think of other sites that you want to do after this one. So we are going to say business, but obviously if you are looking for a personal portfolio of photography type stuff, if you have events or fundraisers you're trying to schedule, there's so many different options with Wix. doesn't matter which one you, you click here. Ultimately, you can choose from any website you want later on, and they can all end up back at the same website no matter how you click in the very beginning. So then we have the ADI creator or we have create your own website. I've heard a lot of other people say this as well and I agree. I think it's very important to create your own website for a lot of reasons. The first one I think and the foremost reason is so that in the future if anything happens on your website, anything goes wrong or if you wanna change anything, you know how your website's built, you know how it's designed. Uh, even if you're just starting from a template, not totally from the ground up, but you know where things are and you know a lot more about your website. Whereas with the ADI, you don't really know what's going on. You might not know where things are, what's going, like, you know, you wanna make sure that you're as thorough as possible and you really understand it. So that's why I would say choose a template. And if you go, there are endless templates, there's so many different options. And this is what I said before, where if you choose business, but you're like, hey, you know what, maybe, maybe you, you know, restaurants, more like food, less like business, you don't wanna show off how much you're like, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever category you want, you can choose from the templates on the side. And this is really the only difference that that original choice made. So I recommend before going through all the templates here, you wanna go through the left side and try to narrow it down as much as possible. Of course, any one of these, don't worry about the pictures. So example, like this one doesn't have to be a relationship coach. This could be like a bike repair shop and you could easily replace all the pictures. It just is to show you the general layout and the general color scheme of these. You can change everything once you open it up, but this should just give you a head start. So you wanna pick one as close to what you want to have in the end as possible so you limit the changes that you need to make. So let's just say this one right here. This one actually looks, I like this one. This one looks pretty good. So we can go and say view to decide, you know, is it actually good? This is what we want. So it gives you sort of a simulated experience of what this website would look like. So you have a big picture right there and you'll notice 
most of these websites are sort of like a strip design. So you scroll down and you keep having these banners. So right here we have like a big light blue one, a big white one. Above that we have a big picture and then you have your header on the top. And on the very bottom, you usually have some kind of footer with like a, a map or you don't have to have a map there. And a lot of times there's like a contact us thing. So that's very common for a website layout. Almost all of these you'll notice have that very, you know, a very similar layout. So if we view this one, you'll see again, they have that strip layout. So you scroll down and they have like the next strip and then the next strip. This one I really like because you scroll past these pictures and they kind of stay in place. I think that's a, a pretty cool uh, look right there. It's a lot of, it's relatively modern. A lot of newer websites are doing that. The thing with websites is they get outdated fairly quickly. So it's really important, you know, to not make a website that looks like it was made in 2015 if you're making it in 2020. Okay, so I think out of these websites, it, like I said, it doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm just going to say this one right here and you click edit. So once you get into edit, then it'll open up the website and it's going to look exactly like the template. All the text is going to say like, you know, generic, put something here. So see, it's just, it's generating it right now. Okay, so once you get into your actual website, this is where you can really start to make the magic happen. Now, before we start moving anything around, I wanna just give you guys a general tour of this site, what it's like to use it, and just show you where the different tools are that you have when you're trying to do stuff. So starting off with the very top, so over there, you'll see the page and you can choose which page you have. So you'll notice that across the top, as with most websites, you have different pages. And if you click on those, they don't actually bring you to the pages. So if you're starting off, you might be frustrated not knowing how to go to different pages. So you do that up here in the page tab and you can go down and click on any page you want. There's also some other options down there with settings and notifications. But for the most part, we're just gonna use this to change different pages. So if we wanna to go to the services page, you just click on that, it brings you over to services. There are other ways to do this as well. If you go over to the top little bubble here to uh, menus and pages, if you go up to site menu, you can click on whichever page you're on or whichever page you wanna work on. This also gives you more options than the top. So the top you'll see, this is just a quick way to navigate between pages. But this little top bubble right here, the menus and pages option, you can actually go and hide pages, you can show pages, uh, you can, I'll, I'll get into a lot of that later on. But for the most part, what you really need to know is the top bar is how you get to different pages. Then next we have this little, pretty clearly a desktop icon and a phone icon. So uh, the good thing about Wix is you don't have to worry about making a separate mobile site. If you just generate your desktop site and then you click on switch to mobile view, it'll show you what it looks like on a phone. And then you can of course scroll through and so, sorry, let's skip that. Um, so then you can scroll through and you can edit this on a simulated phone to really decide how you want it to look on a phone. Uh, you can move blocks up and down, you can change things and it's going to make it very easy to make a mobile site because honestly, I think it's something like 50% of the internet is on phones right now. Honestly, it's probably even more by the time you're watching this. I know on YouTube, my videos, I think it's like 60% of views are from mobile devices. And so, you know, it's very, very, very important to have a high quality mobile site. Okay, but for the most part, I recommend doing most of your editing on the regular site, the desktop site, um, just because it's going to be easier to edit in a larger format here. So next we have site right there. Now site, you can save it, you can preview it, uh, you can publish it and a couple other options. I don't recommend publishing yet because you wanna make sure your website is all you know ready to go. Of course, if you do publish it now, it doesn't matter because you know, you're not going to rank in Google the, the second you publish it. So nobody's going to find it. So it's really not a big deal. But just to keep things simple and safe, I usually just hit save. And then whenever you're ready, you can click preview and it will show you what your website looks like in real life. So this time you can actually click on the tabs in the top. You can click on different things. And so it's like services there. You can go and learn about, you know, whatever your website would be like for the end user. Now, one quick tip here, I do recommend that if possible, I know it's not practical for everybody, I recommend viewing your website on as many different screens as possible. So you might not realize it at first, but maybe your laptop screen is very different from like an old monitor, like an old computer monitor, which is very different from someone else's TV. And it doesn't, or a projector, for example, you don't know where people will be watching your website. And so the first website I designed, I actually had a problem where I released it and then I looked on a different desktop that had a smaller monitor 
and my logo was cut off and it looked really bad. And I realized at that time that different aspect ratios don't always scale your website correctly. And so you might have your website be cut off on either side. So there are margins here that should help you with that. But regardless, I recommend you at least take a look at it on as many different screens as possible uh, just to avoid any issues because you don't know what people are using to look at your website. Okay, so next we're going over to settings and this is where we're going to diverge a little bit, but we'll come back. And so I wanna say connect domain. I think this is something that's very important because if you are any real genuine website, if you're trying to be serious about this and if it's a business, if it's a, a portfolio or any anything that anybody would look at in any sort of professional setting. So basically anything that's not like a high school project, I would say you pretty much need your own domain because there's nothing tackier than having a website that's like mike2679.wix.com slash my first website, you know? So like, I just think that's not really a good look. So I always go and connect the domain. It's really not that expensive. There are plans for Wix where you can upgrade to premium for like $15, $20 a month. They're not that expensive. If you have a business that's relatively small, you know, as an expense for your business, and then having a domain, you can easily get them for like $15 or $20 per year. So you do have two different options. You can buy a domain name from Wix. I don't recommend that. I recommend shopping around on some different websites. There's Google Domains. Personally, I like Squarespace. I think it manages it the best. It's also pretty safe. So I use Squarespace. Then you can go to connect your own domain. Before we do that though, it's important that we upgrade to premium. So here it's going to prompt us and say, select a plan. So like I said before, I think it really is important to select a plan and not just use the free version of Wix for two reasons. One, so you can have a domain and two, so you don't have Wix ads popping up on the top and bottom of your website saying, this was made with a free version of Wix. You guys should try out Wix. I think that's just a distraction and it's very unprofessional. So selecting a plan, there are a lot of different plans and I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna dive through each of these because they do change quite a bit actually. So unlimited looks like a pretty decent one right here. Uh, Pro they say is the best value. So you have to look and say like, are you actually going to use an events calendar? Are you actually using like a professional logo generator? Um, or do you just care about, you know, whatever. Here this says free domain for a year. Now, trace back to what I said before, I don't recommend getting the Wix domains. So if you buy from them, you're locked in through them, which means that you're paying whatever their price is. If you go and buy through someone else, then you don't have those two intertangled. And I think it's overall better to buy from like Squarespace or, or Google Domains or GoDaddy. There, you know, there's other options out there. So go check them out, compare prices. Maybe Wix is the best one for you. Um, but if you go with free domain for a year, you're locked in, they own your domain. And once your website's really steamrolling, then suddenly they might jack up the price and you're screwed. So for this one, I'm just going to select pro. I think that's a fair option for me. So next it asks you how long you want to subscribe and you can choose monthly, yearly, every two years, or even three years. So there are many different business philosophies about how, what, how you should spend your money early on on a business. What I always do is I always choose three years when I start a business because I would rather not plan for my business to fail. I would rather plan for it to be successful for three years and ultimately save money along the way. Of course, for this video right here, because this is not an actual website that I'm actually using, this is only for video purposes, I'm just gonna choose monthly and cancel it after next month. If you have something like an event coming up or a fundraiser, and it's maybe a one-time thing a year from now, or maybe you wanna make like a wedding website or something, then you may wanna just choose yearly. That makes perfect sense and then cancel it after a year. So we put in the plan and we can then go in here. It says, what domain do you want? And they want you to buy it from Wix. Now, if you go down and you see the tiny blue text on the bottom, you can say already have a domain, connect it. We are going to do that. So we're gonna connect our domain. Okay, so then when it asks for your domain name, this is where we have to go off again on a small other tangent and get our domain. So getting your domain, I recommend Squarespace. Like I said, you can use anything. I'm not sponsored by Squarespace. I do not care. Squarespace, please sponsor me in the future. Um, but yeah, I really don't care what you guys use. So use whatever you want, shop around. And so you just type in your domain. So I'm gonna say OBR Travel. That's like, a, you know, just some other channel I've been working on a little bit as a, you know, a pet project. So right here, it happens to be available. $20 a year, that's like $1.50 a month. It's not that expensive. So we are going to get that. So we'll go there and we'll continue to check out. So just like that, we bought our own domain. Squarespace wants you to make it on Squarespace. So if you're interested in making your website on Squarespace, I will maybe make a video about that in the future, but not today, we're doing Wix. So right here we have obrtravel.com. 
obrtravel.com, and it's going to find our domain partner. Um, so we have to log in and do all this stuff. Okay, so bear with me, guys. We're almost done with this part. I know this is a little bit technical, but this is very important when you're making a website. So the next thing you want to do is come back to Wix. You want to go and you know type in what your domain is. It brings you here, and then you need to go and back and log in and go to your domain DNS slash name servers settings. Okay, so if we go back to Squarespace. Okay, guys, so, so bear with me. We're almost through this. The next thing we want to do is click on the domain that we now have and we're almost there. And like we said, we want to go down to advanced settings. And from advanced settings, you can change the DNS, which it showed you before. And then we can go to name servers and use custom name server. And the name server that we want, we are going to copy from over here. So we have right there. And we're going to copy and paste that. We're going to add it. And then I think we should be good. So let's try it out now. So verify connection. It will be trying to connect it, and then we should be okay. Back to the editor, the next option over is tools. Now tools has a few different options here. You have your toolbar, which is your white block on the right side. You can make it appear or disappear. It's helpful if you're trying to place an image or a shape or text. I don't really use it that much though, so I think I'm gonna just kind of turn this off. And then we also have rulers. You'll see on the top and the right side, you have a ruler. So this is helpful if you're trying to add like a line going across, if you wanna line everything up horizontally. Um, and you can also look at how many pixels away it is from whatever the zero mark is. So this is good for vertical if you wanna add like a halfway mark or maybe on thirds. So that way, if you have like multiple things lined up, they're all perfectly in the center, perfectly in the third. Uh, and what you would wanna do then is you wanna know how wide it is, so like 980, I believe, is the width. So for this, we just say, I believe half of 980 is 490. Um, so you'd say that and that's going to be right in the middle. Now, if you don't like these lines, you can go and click on them and then hit delete. So just click on the line, tap delete. Uh, I accidentally made a second one right there, tap and delete. Um, and it just is really easy to utilize these to arrange things and make it look better and more balanced on your website. So the other one is grid lines, which is going to be, as you can see, those dotted lines going vertically and horizontally. The vertical ones are helpful, like I said before, because different websites or different monitors rather have different aspect ratios. So it's good if you have a smaller screen, as long as everything is within those margins, you should be you know, pretty well off. Then we have snap objects, which is going to be essentially going back to those lines I showed you. If you snap objects onto those lines, again, it's a lot easier to line things up. Then we have dev mode, so development mode is going to be good for some advanced stuff. If you wanna have some really advanced uh, like coding type stuff built into this, it's good that you can go into dev mode. We're not gonna do that in, in this video. Maybe some advanced SEO stuff might be there. If you wanna add some advanced widgets in here that aren't in the widgets, you know, the app store right there, then you can do that there. Help is useful, so you can go to the Help Center if you have any questions that you know are not answered in this video or I can't answer in the comment section. You know, if something's going wrong, it's good to go to the Help Center and talk to Wix support or go through the FAQs and find out you know what other people said about that. Then we have keyboard shortcuts. There will be a few things depending on what your website is meant to do. There's going to be a couple things that you do repetitive, like pretty repeatedly. And so for a larger website, it might be useful to set up some keyboard shortcuts um, and see what ones you know already exist. For example, so we're not going to do that right now. Then we have upgrade, and that's pretty much all we have on the top bar. Now on the left side, these little bubbles. This is where we really get into tools we use when we're building the website. So I showed you menus and pages earlier. Now essentially what this does is it shows you all the different pages across the top right here. You can go to different ones and you can rearrange them. So you can click and drag this one, you know, down farther and it'll rearrange where they show up there. So about is now over there. Um, and you can also hide some. So you could say, you know, I don't want good to know to be popping up. So we can go and hide that. And maybe it's something that you still want. And instead of having it on the top right there, you can have, you know, something on your home page. So let's go back to our home page. You can have something on the home page, like link to it, for example. So that's useful. If we say like, yeah, you know what? We want like, we want this button right here to link to. So you go and click at the link button and you say you wanna link it to a page that might be like a hidden page, right? So we could say good to know. So that way we don't have good to know on the top, but it's still a page that exists if people wanna click on a button and it'll link them over that way. So later on in this video, I will show you a few other things you can do within this little menu right here, including some SEO type stuff. And I'll show you how to collect email lists. If you're trying to you know, grow an email list with this, if it's a blog, uh, or if otherwise you wanna have some membership pages, I'll show you how to do that later on. But continuing on just for basic website building purposes, you can add a different page background. Since we have a template, I don't really feel the need to do that. 
And then the little plus button right here is where we can actually add most of our stuff. So you can add different text. Um, you can add, make sure when you add text, another thing that uh, a lot of other people say this as well in the SEO community, you want to make sure that you're not using too many different fonts because when you load the website, you don't want, you don't want to be loading a whole bunch of different fonts. It'll slow your website down. You won't rank as well on Google. And also you want to make sure that, you, you know, your website looks clean. You want to have a set format. Try to pick maybe two to three different fonts at most for your website. Honestly, I've made websites with only one font and it works out really well in most cases, especially because you want to have have a lot of pictures and you want to have, you know, a, a decent amount of text there, but you shouldn't be having all kinds of different like text art going on. I don't really do that much. Then we have gallery. Um, so if you want to add like a gallery there where you have like one picture and a whole bunch of other ones people can click on, useful, especially if it's a portfolio website. Um, some vector art, I don't really use those. Shape is very useful for things like you see right here, this little line down there. You might be wondering, like, how did they get that? Well, it's technically a shape is what is what they're using as a line right there. Then some interactive stuff, which can be useful. You can have things pop up when you hover over them. I recommend that if you're trying to figure out a way to, you know, make things simpler. Sometimes it's nice just to have like a few pictures. And then when you hover over it, it'll pop up with some text and show people about it. A little more interactive, uh, keeps people more engaged with your website, maybe keeps it a little more aesthetic and a little more interesting. So continuing down, we have buttons right there. Buttons are extremely important, but essentially that's just a shape with some text that is linked to either another website or another page. And again, one thing that I mentioned before, and it's extremely important when you're making a website, is you need to remember what the big picture or what the purpose is of your website. So if your website is supposed to, you know, like gain leads. So if you are a website and you're like a consulting company, Everything on your website should be pointing people and kind of funneling them in the direction of contacting you and doing business with you. Because ultimately, the purpose of a website for a business is to, you know, increase your revenue, add more dollars and add more value to your company. And so if you have buttons going off the wrong way and people, you know, end up at dead ends, they end up at like the about me page and then like, well, well then what? They have to go back home and like re-navigate to find out how to contact you? No. What you want to do is want you want to make sure you have buttons and utilize them, you know, properly so that you have people, you know, directed in the wherever you want them to go on your website. So for this website in particular, because we're using, you know, James Consulting, whatever this option is right here, um, which actually let's change that to Mike Consulting. So this is our header. We're just going to change that to Mike. Mike Consulting. Okay, so Mike Consulting, whatever. I don't know. And so what we want to do is, you know, that's going to direct people to home, but on every single one of these pages. So if they look at projects and then what do they do? Okay, they saw your projects, but maybe what you want them to do then is you could have like a button say like, you know, learn more or something and have them directed to another page that would somehow allow them to contact you. Another option is down in your footer right here. Something you could add is a form. So it's a good way that, you know, I like to have a form on the bottom of every single page to make it as easy as possible for people to contact me. So to add a form, what you want to do is go over to add right there, go down to forms and then choose a contact form. So, you know, there's, you know, obviously if you're not looking for contact, you're looking for like payment or whatever, lots of different options, but contact form is probably what I would recommend for like a consulting company if you want to get like a quote or something. Uh, so you go over there and you want to drag that down into your footer. Now, sometimes it's going to not place it in your footer. So right there, it did it again, where it put it up in your main body. And then what you want to do is drag it down. And then at some point it'll say move to footer. So I think right there, if we click and drag this, it says move to footer. So we're going to go and say, yes, move that to the footer. Okay, so then it's in the footer, which means that on every single page people check out, this will be on the bottom. Obviously, we don't want it looking like this. I would touch it up and make it look better. But something you can do then is go and, you know, manage the fields. So if you don't want first name, last name, email, phone, address, you know, some stuff like that, you might not need, you know, depending case to case, you can either delete things or you can go and edit what they say. You can make different things required or not required. So you could say like name, you could say company, you could say email, phone, and then just like, you know, leave us a note or what's your website or something like that. Especially if you're doing like an SEO agency, this would be a great place to, you know, set up something that says like, tell us what your website is. We'll, we'll check it out and we'll give you like a free, uh, you know, listing of everything that you need to fix. So some other things you can add to make your website look better. Of course, videos are something that's really useful and very powerful. Uh, you see them all the time with different ads. You know, most companies have lots of videos on their websites and you can add videos from or playlists from YouTube or Facebook or Daily Motion. you know, lots of different options there. You can also add music to your site. Maybe that's better if you're like a creator, a creative artist there. 
You can have social type stuff. I recommend adding, you know, different social things. So maybe like a Facebook feed uh, or you can go down and find like an Instagram feed and add that. You can showcase some of your stuff. Most of the stuff on here is free. Every now and then you find some widgets that you do have to pay for. Um, so this one is going to be Instagram, right? So no problem there. And you're going to have to obviously go to settings and really configure this. Make sure it's going to like your Instagram feed and everything works properly. And again, go to preview and check it out and make sure it works. Okay, so I'm not going to connect my Instagram right now. And obviously, like I said, I'm not making this website for real. I would spend a lot more time making it look better and make sure this is not on like the, you know, different projects page, unless it's like a portfolio or a social media growth site. I don't know, whatever you're doing, obviously case to case is very different. So make sure you don't just like plop in uh, an Instagram feed randomly like that. But that's an example of how you could integrate some social media on here. And that could also be a good way if maybe one of your purposes on your website is to direct people over to a different platform like Instagram, you could put in your feed right there and have people, you know, clicking on it and getting over and following you on Instagram or subscribing on YouTube or whatever you're doing. Okay, so let's go back to the homepage here. And another thing that you see a lot of websites have, and it's a really powerful tool, is if you go down to a light box. Now, uh, Lightbox is essentially going to pop up based on some trigger on your website. It might be after a certain amount of time on your website. It might be right away. It might be when they click on something. You can have different triggers, but it'll pop up full screen and it'll tell you, you know, like, hey, thanks for checking us out. Are you interested in making more money on your website? If so, you know, contact us right now. And while you're on the website, we'll go and, you know, take a look at your website and let you know what you could do better, you know? So something like that, you can get free quotes. You can have, you know, whatever you want for your website, you can have something pop up and force them to either click X or read it and then click OK. It's just a good way, a good call to action on your website to achieve whatever your goal is when people visit. So if you just do this, you click on it. Um, and essentially, this is going to you'll drag it wherever you want. Obviously, it's probably just going to be in the middle of your home page would be a decent spot. So your light box has a lot of different options. You can manage different light boxes if you have multiple ones. So you can also set the triggers and the triggers could just be like open as soon as you get on the website, right? So that's what it is right now. Just like a welcome one. As soon as it pops up, um, you can have it showing up on different pages of your website. You can change out how they X out of it. If there's a close button, like an X out or like a literal X up there or whatever. And so that's basically all you really need to know about that. Managing light boxes, if you don't like them, so I accidentally added two right now, you can go up and delete one of them and that's going to be up in your site menu. So yeah, let's, let's delete that one. And so then, so light boxes on the little first bubble right there, you see you do have one, and you can go in here, and this is where you can get into your Lightbox editor. So we're gonna get out of Lightbox editing mode and bring us right back to just regular website mode. So this would be a good time to go and make sure that you saved whatever you're doing. And if you're interested, I know before I said I don't really publish until the end, but sometimes maybe in this situation, I'll hit publish now. And I just wanna make sure that like the domain connected properly. I wanna make sure that everything looks good. It's working properly. Um, and so they're right there. It says, yep, is that what we want? And that's that should be it. So let's just say done. Now, if we just go over to obrtravel.com, it pops up with our website. You can see everything looks pretty good. You're able to scroll around and click on it. And it looks already, it's starting to look pretty good. Even though we didn't customize anything yet, we didn't change any text we have a website with our domain. So some other stuff you can do on this, if you go down to the Wix app market, I kind of mentioned this a few times before, but there are paid things, there are free things, and you can have you know different social media integrations. There's, I recommend going through this and just checking out what there is. There's different forums, bookings, you know, chats and stuff like that. There's endless options you have with this. And obviously, you know, it's very powerful to use these. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single one right now and show you guys which ones I like and don't like. I think when you're making your website, I recommend you scroll through, check it out, maybe try a few of these out and see if they work for you. But one thing that you'll notice that this does come with is uh, sort of a different app is the chat app. And this can be good or bad depending on how big your team is and how often you will be, you know, monitoring this. Now. Obviously, you're not going to be sitting on the website or on the Wix site on your laptop all the time unless, you know, you get a lot of chats nonstop, in which case maybe you want to do that. But for a lot of people, you might not be watching the chat unless you have the app on your phone. So I recommend getting the app on your phone, turning notifications on. And even then, if you're not quick to reply, if you're not somebody that's going to be looking at that every time your phone buzzes, maybe it's not good for you. Because honestly, I think it would almost be better to not have a chat on there than to have a chat if somebody's going to type it in and expect a quick reply and be sitting there on your website waiting for five minutes 
no one replies, they're going to think like, does anyone, does anyone even monitor this website? Is this even a real site anymore? And you're going to actually have a negative impact on the viewer. So make sure you only use the chat if you're actually going to reply quickly. If you do, it can be extremely powerful and a great way to engage the people on your website to, you know, get them to, again, funnel into whatever your end destination is for them, whether that is some kind of lead, if it's like an email list, whatever it is, that's a great way to capture people. So what you want to do then is you can go to settings for your Wix chat. You can have it pop up. You can have, you know, a few quick automated replies right away. Uh, you can say like, hi, welcome to a website. This is, this is Mike or something like that, you know? So uh, you could also have people say like, you know, if they send you a message, you can say, hey, I'll email you back. Let me know what your email is and you can do that. So different ways you could do it. I'm not going to go through that too much right now, but just know that if you don't like the chat, what you can do is you can just click the delete button. So just click on it and uh, click delete and it goes away from your website. Then you don't have to worry about that. Now, what I recommend next is go down and this is where you should start. Now that you know where the tools are, start editing all the text, start editing everything, redirect different buttons, redirect different links. And let's go through that and just, I'll give you a quick you know, rundown of how you do that. So let's just say, you know, these three blocks right here, let's say we want to change them. So you click, you could double click on any one of them and start changing the text. And on the right side, you see that little box there. This is where you can change the font. This is where you can change like a theme for that, change the size, make it bold. You could change the color. Or if you want to have like, say like a couple words that want to link to something, you just click on this little chain link. And the link, of course, backlinks are extremely important for SEO on websites these days. So you want to make sure that as much as possible, you're taking, you know, different phrases and different buttons and linking them back to other parts of your website. You want to make sure that you have, you know, so if this right here is talking about services, the button should lead to services. If you have something that says like, you know, we do like consulting or we do something else, maybe each of those should link out, you know, have them highlighted and underlined and have them link out to different pages on your site. So as many links as possible that obviously as many links as make sense you don't want just non-stop links on here but you want to try to use links as much as you think you you should now you'll notice with the links you have different options here so you can have it linked to a web address a page on your website an anchor and i'll show you what that is in a second uh, the top or the bottom of the page you can have it linked to a phone number an email so you can say contact you know and if it's a casual contact way where it's not through a form it'll just you know open up their gmail or whatever in another tab and have them send it to your email address so just another way they can contact you that's a little bit like off the books it's not on your you know on wix as much not managed as by wix it's just a link to have them mail to you you can also choose if it's opening in a new window or the current window some things make sense current window some want to be a new window so i know i said i'd talk a little bit more about anchors now this template does not come with anchors some do some don't but essentially what an anchor is you can think about like a wikipedia page you know how on the top maybe on the top left usually they have like an outline of everything on that page and they're clickable links so you click on maybe like references for example and it scrolls down automatically to show you the references section so that's an anchor so if we want to have something up top here and maybe like contact us is a thing so contact us if they click on that it'll make them scroll down automatically to the bottom right here the contact us portion of your page actually right here it does have an anchor right there. I didn't realize they had one here. So if we go to our website and we click on contact, it'll automatically scroll you down to contact us. So if you want more anchors than just that one there, what you do is go over to add right there, go down to more at the bottom, and then you can have anchors. So if we go to more, and then you have anchors right there. So you can add an anchor. You can also add uh, anchor menus, maybe like at the top of your page so you can click and have people like quickly scroll down to different portions of your page. Um, and again, if you don't like the anchors, just like everything else here, well, first of all, you can click and drag it and move the anchors if you want it to scroll to like right there, or you could rename it. And if you don't, if you don't like your anchor for some reason, or if it came with an anchor that you don't think you need, you can just click the delete button, it goes away. And if you decide, you know, like, oh, crap, I didn't mean to delete that, you hit control Z, and it will bring it right back. And of course, undo and redo are at the top if you don't use the hotkeys. Another way to do that. And while we're up here, I forgot to mention before the zoom out and reorder. So I told you how everything's kind of in like a strip type design, or not all of them, but many of them are. So you'll see right here, you have different strips. So if you want to rearrange them, you can click on one of them and you can, you know, reorder up or down. Um, and you can change, you can duplicate a section if you want to have something kind of similar to that below it. Just more options if you zoom out and you can also get a good idea of what your page, the overall flow of your page is, you know, by zooming out like that. I recommend doing that. 
Now, I keep talking about SEO, and essentially, for those of you who don't know, if you're very new to this, it's search engine optimization. So the majority of people going to your website, a lot of the new traffic will come through Google. So people will search, you know, like local consulting or lawnmowers near me or something like that. And Google goes around and looks at all the different websites, not all at once for every search, of course, but they have, you know, crawlers that go around over the months and find, you know, what your website is, find out what it's about. And they try to learn, you know, what category you are so that when people search, they can connect the, you know, the searcher to the correct website or the most, the best website for them. So you want to make yourself as visible as possible, as easy as possible for Google to find you and refer you to new searches. So one of the things you want to do, like I said, backlinks are extremely important. And another one is you want to make sure that your text on here is, you know, easy for Google to see. So example, you don't want to just have pictures with like text in the picture. What you want to do is have a picture and then maybe a description below that, that, you know, clearly explains and use the, uses the proper keywords of the picture so that, you know, Google can just look at the words and know what the picture is. And maybe within those words, you can also have a backlink to something else on your website. So obviously SEO is a huge topic. That's not really the scope of this video, but I just wanted to point that out right now on a page like this, I would recommend don't just have it something like that corporate strategy, one hour, $170, right? You'd want to have something below that, that explains what that is. What is $170? What does it mean to get corporate strategy consulting, right? So lots of different things with that. But essentially, if you, more SEO, just a quick little rundown here. I kind of mentioned this before. If you go to menus and pages, go to site menu, just a real quick thing you can do on each of your pages is you can go to SEO for Google, of course, and go down and just fill out all this stuff. So you want to, you know, give a quick description of what it is. You want to, you know, name it properly. You want to make sure that you have the best URL to make it as user friendly and obvious as possible. So like your services page shouldn't be like obrtravel.com slash like JQSZ, whatever, like you don't want that. You want it to be services. Or if you have something else, it could be like services dash, you know, new or whatever it is. You want it to make sense so that people can look at that and be like, oh yeah, I know what that website domain is. It's not, not a shady website. Google finds it easily and everything works out really well. So I do recommend going into the SEO type stuff here. So next I mentioned how to collect an email list on Wix. And what I recommend doing is creating a membership page on your website. So what you can do is you can hide your page. And I showed you how to do that. If you click here and you go to hide or show in this case, because it's already hidden. So you click hide. And then what you do is you go into settings and that'll bring you up to here. And as you go over to the right, you keep clicking to the right until you see permissions. And within permissions, you can make it a members only page. Now, if you have a members only page, people have to be a member in order to see your page. So uh, I believe this page right here, if we go over to SEO, let's see what the link is for this one. This one looks like it's uh, obrtravel.com slash file share. That doesn't sound like a good one. So we'll say member, right? So that way, when we save and publish our website, so let's publish it right now, and I'll show you what that looks like. So here you'll see when somebody goes to obrtravel.com slash member, they have to either log in or sign up and they make it easy with Facebook or Google. That way people, you know, you're collecting the emails and they're able to obviously working through this, they're able to unsubscribe if they don't like your emails. Um, and overall, it's just a very easy way to capture emails with this. Not the best way. You know, there are other ways out there for different uses. If you want to use MailChimp or something like that. Um, but that's just an easy way to do it with Wix right here. If you're using everything, just getting started off, great way to get started with email. Emails, um, and just memberships in general. Okay, so let's say you want to add a page and start totally from scratch on your new page, or just say, you know, your maybe your template doesn't have enough pages here. So what you do is you go up to menus and pages, and then right on the bottom, you can add a page. And this is a really good way to, you know, I'll show you guys some of the things you can really do when you start a new page. So of course, you can name it, we're just going to leave it named as new page just because it doesn't actually matter. But you can see right there, it pops up on the top horizontal menu. If you don't want it up there, uh, you can hide it and hiding it just means that it's not up there. Of course, you can still access this page. You just have to get to this either by the URL or from a link on some other button on maybe a different page, right? So there are a lot of different options you can do with this, but let's just say that, you know, we're good. We're just going to do a standard new page right here. Then you can go and add some things. Now, I showed you a lot of different things you could add before, but when you're starting off, like I said before, is you know, the general strip design is pretty common. So I recommend going and adding strips to this. And you may even want to zoom out when you add these strips to rearrange them and make everything look as good as possible. So let's just say welcome. 
I don't know, let's say your brand, say we want that, you can click and drag these and it'll just put them on the page. You can then say if you have this strip right here, you can change the strip background. So that's probably the next thing you want to do. So you don't have, oh, I don't know, whatever that is going on. Maybe it doesn't fit with your consulting company. So you have lots of different backgrounds. You can also up upload your own images. Um, and so there are really endless options for what you want to do here. You can go and upload media as you see right there. Also, I didn't mention before, but you can actually upload your own media and access it in a couple different ways. So over here, you have some stuff that you can upload your media. You can get it from Facebook, Instagram, Google Drive. They make it very easy and very accessible to bring in your own media, use some free Wix images, use some free Wix videos. I don't know, let's say we want a video somewhere um, and you could easily use a video as a background for one of these strips as well. Um, and they look pretty good sometimes. Sometimes it's nice to have a video playing. So like, for example, like centralmedia.com, you go there and we do have a video playing right away. So it takes a little bit longer to load like that, but it may be captivating depending on, you know, who your audience is and what you're looking for. So this is a website that is not really up and running right now. It's under maintenance. We're kind of redesigning it a bit, but regardless, uh, you can add videos and add them to your backdrop, uh, or your strips or whatever you want. And so for this one, uh, you can do a lot here. You can say behaviors, you can have it play like immediately. You can have it play when people click on it. You can have it loop. You can, you know, lots of different options with videos here. And of course you can also link YouTube videos as well. So if you don't want it, let's just tap delete and that gets rid of it. And let's just say we want to add some more strips. All right. So let's say you want to add more strips to this one. Obviously that's probably not a sufficient page right there with our trashy little footer on the bottom. Uh, we probably actually shouldn't have it. It looks really bad like that. I'm just going to delete that for now. So get rid of the form. The form can look really good there, like I said, but obviously you don't want a white, you know, gaudy looking thing like that. So let's say we want to add more strips. So again, you go back to add, you go down to strips and you can find out, you know, like maybe you want testimonials right now. Maybe you want something with three columns. Let's double click that and it'll pop up below where we want. So that's the next strip. And then again, we have we can change the size of it. We can drag it down a little bit, add some white space. Uh, we can add it to the footer if we wanted. So lots of different options. But something like this is what I was talking about before, where this would be something that would be a really good interactive thing. So you could have like a picture of a person there or maybe some kind of like name or like, I don't know, whatever it is. And then people hover over it. So maybe if these are like the people that work with you, you could have like their name and a picture. And if people hover over it, maybe this little thing would pop up. So great way to make that an interactive. Um, and so if you want to add interactives, that would actually, I would delete those and replace it with an interactive. It'd be easier to do that. But you can go into add and again, do that in add from interactive, like I showed you before. That would actually be a hover box, by the way. So this is actually what I meant. So what I would do is I would delete those three boxes there and I would have something like this one where you have, you know, this is what it normally looks like. And then when somebody hovers over it, so click on the hover tab there and you can edit whatever it says when they hover over it. So just a cool way so that, you know, when people are moving around, it's a little bit more interactive and a little bit more is happening. So another thing I showed you a little bit earlier, and let's just say right now you want to change this text. Of course, I recommend, again, having the, the same few fonts. When you add different strips, they kind of come with their own fonts. So we'll just say like um, Mike Brand, right? We'll just Mike, oh, spelled that really wrong. Mike Brand, whatever. It's my brand, Mike Brand. And let's just say that we want this, whatever, I don't know, whatever. And we want it to link back to another page, which is a great way to have things, you know, flow throughout your website. You go to link there, like I showed you before, and then you can have it either link to, like I showed you, you know, top of the page, documents, anchors, whatever, or like we're going to do right now, we're going to link it over to the services page. If people like it, they can go check out the services, right? So this is essentially how you would start generating uh, a new page, you know, just strip by strip. That's typically how I would do it. Just insert as many strips as you want, change the colors of them. So I showed you how to change a picture background. This one I think might just be a color background. So you could change the strip background and choose, you know, again, they're probably going to offer like some different pictures you can use. You can go with color, you can go with video, you know, lots and lots of different options for the backgrounds. So something else that is very important, and I mentioned before, you know, if you have a picture and let's just drag this over here, we have a picture there. I said that it was important to have captions, but sometimes you can't have a caption. And, and sometimes, you know, what you want to do instead, and actually you should probably do this for every picture, but if you can't have a caption, at least do this, go into settings and go down and tell Google what the image is. So you add some alt text there and essentially it makes it easier for Google to, you know, when they're scraping through your website or crawling through your website and figuring out what your website 
website is about, it's important that you have everything pretty clearly labeled so it's easier for Google to detect what it is. You're, again, you're optimizing your website for Google so you get more traffic. And then while we're in settings here, it's also important to note that you have some other options. So you can add links to this, of course, like I showed you before. You can have some different image behaviors and you can also do a little bit of editing here. Most of the pictures that I upload, I already edit elsewhere just because the tools are a little bit limited. So you can crop it, you can do, you know, a few things with it, touch it up. But overall, you're not going to be, you know, it's not Photoshop here. It's going to be so it's going to be a fairly simple rudimentary set of tools. OK, so I added another strip here just to demonstrate something pretty quickly. So. If you decide that you want more white space above or below it, you can pretty easily do that by stretching things or clicking and dragging. So this stretching is going to make this strip a little bit bigger. And if we go to the strip below it, we can actually pull down from the top and it drags it down. It adds some more white space there. And you know, that could be useful if you're trying to put like a line there or some kind of divider. I don't know what you're trying to do. If you just want like a blank white space, that could also be useful if you're trying to put other blocks in there. I, whatever you're trying to do, it's just important that you know that you can move these strips around, stretch them, shrink them, uh, do whatever you need to do to manage your website and make it look as good as possible. So now that I showed you most of the tools here, I want to go back to the dashboard and show you guys a little bit more about this. So Wix actually has a lot of powerful stuff behind the scenes, not just in the editor. So when you start your website, it is important that you go and check out just the dashboard here. They'll give you some tips about things that you haven't done yet. So, you know, create your first service, set your work hours, do some SEO work. It walks you through the SEO with their SEO whiz, makes it fairly simple to at least get started on that. And then you can go down and like I said, there's so many different things that they tell you. They really walk you through a lot of the, um, the different things that you maybe forget when you start a website or you didn't think about, you know, OK, well, maybe you should start an email campaign. Maybe you should make some more social media posts about this, you know, stuff like that. Another important thing is to get a mailbox. I'm not going to walk you through that in this video, but if you want to have an email associated with your business, as most people probably do, you can go and get a mailbox right here or you can go through like G Suite or many other places that you can connect a mailbox and essentially have, you know, instead of like uh, Mike consulting at gmail.com, which is kind of tacky and and, you know, not really a professional business, you can instead say like, you know, Mike consulting at Mike or Mike at whatever, whatever your website is. And you can have some kind of normal, you know, contact at OBR for example, would be a good one. So lots of different options here. You can also change or upgrade your plans here. And there is a lot you can do. Like I said before, I also recommend getting the Wix app so that if you do have a membership page, I mentioned this before, if you have a membership page anywhere on your website, or if you have a chat on the bottom corner, you can be notified on your phone. So you can, you know, one track how many emails you're gaining, how many members you're gaining, if people have questions, or if anybody's using the chat, you can reply directly from your phone. So lastly, before you're done and you really wrap it up here, you want to go over to mobile view right here. Maybe you want to do this earlier on as you're developing everything, but you want to see what it looks like. So you could say like, yeah, you know, like maybe these right here look really good, but you see at the top, it kind of cut off like the letter D right there. So it's Mike brand D that just looks really bad. And now you know that you're going to have to somehow fix that. So you can go and, you know, change the font size of that text right here so that it fits perfectly. You can change the alignment of it. You can't do nearly as much in the mobile editor as you can in the main editor that's typically well that's the main reason that I used just the you know desktop editor most of the time but it's very important to come in here and adjust the fonts make sure everything looks good uh, you can work with the background on stuff so you can change some things that are independent of the desktop site but for the most part you want to make sure that you edit you, you make the whole website here on the desktop site and then you go over to mobile and you can really just finish it up there. Sometimes there are things that you want to have on the desktop site, but not on the mobile site. So you can go and have hidden elements. Uh, you can see like maybe if you don't want this strip on mobile, you can go and hide that section. So that shows up in the hidden elements right there. And then back on desktop, you'll see that that section does still exist, but it's just not on mobile for whatever reason. Maybe it just doesn't scale down well and you don't want it there. So guys, I think that's pretty much everything I want to show you in this video as far as the tools on Wix go. That should enable you to, you know, at least get a really good start on your website and get something out there to start ranking in Google. Of course, SEO is your next step, but really the first thing that you want to do as soon as you know what these tools are would be to really go through and add all of your content. Make sure it's customized, make sure every little corner of the entire website is exactly what you want it to be and, you know, not like, you know, 
Jeff's Consulting or whatever that isn't your website. You don't want to leave the template anywhere on there. Make sure all of the text on every single page is exactly what you want. Now, the last thing I wanted to do here was address a few other questions that I've seen on other, you know, like subreddits and different things of, you know, questionnaires that people are asking about. One of them is what happens if you don't upgrade or if you do upgrade and then stop paying later. So at some point, if you, you know, if you pay and then you stop paying, Wix will downgrade you to the free version. And essentially what it's going to be is like this one would be like Mike 6790, whatever dot Wix dot com slash OBR travel. So you don't have a custom domain. It's not professional. I mean, technically it is a custom domain, but it's not like the professional domain. You have Wix in there. You also have a Wix ad at the top and the bottom, and you'll lose a few different functions that you can have on here, like booking or depending on what plan you got, you'll lose those features. So not a huge deal if that ever happened. But like I said before, I recommend upgrading for almost every purpose out there if you have a business or, you know, if you're doing anything semi-professionally or professionally, it makes sense to just pay that money and have like a real genuine professional website. So guys, if you have any other questions, make sure you leave a comment down below. If you appreciated this video or if you found it helpful, please make sure you go down and click the like and subscribe button. Guys, I hope this video helped you and I wish you luck in starting your new website. It's very exciting. There's a lot of work to do, but if you have any questions, make sure you comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.